at 7 o'clock, we got a surprising 2-0. We got Vanderbilt 2-0 traveling to Georgia State, who's 1-1. One one. Vanderbilt favored by 10.5 on ESPN+. Plus. Diego Pavia, who's been a massive part of this 2-0 start, he's gone 22-29, thrown for 273 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Also leads the team on the ground with 39 carries for 155 yards and two touchdowns. Quinny Skinner Jr., Quincy Skinner Jr., has got six catches for 86 yards and a touchdown. Christian Veyu for the Panthers, gone 45-72, thrown for 448 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Freddie Brock has had 24 carries for 134 yards and a touchdown. And Ted Hurst has had eight catches for 109 yards and a touchdown. Vanderbilt and Georgia State have never played, so that's an interesting thing here. Um, this is an interesting game that I didn't think I would be talking about this point in the year, and that is actual. Actually, I thought I would be. I thought I would be talking about a one and one Vanderbilt squad. Um, instead, I'm talking about a two and zero Vanderbilt squad that has looked pretty good early on. Now, to be fair, now Vanderbilt's one of only two two and zero squads in the SEC not ranked. The other one is South Carolina. South Carolina will be ranked if they pull off the win this weekend. Vanderbilt likely won't be. They have a big game against Missouri next week. Who thought that would be a big game you would be circling on your calendars? But Vanderbilt-Missouri might actually be an interesting football game. It might have a decent amount on the line. Remember, Vanderbilt, they moved to 3-0. Again, like I was saying before with UNC and Duke, a lot of teams are 2-0 at this point, right? And it's not a massive deal if you're 2-0. You start to hit 3-0, and you're, you're going to you start viewing that a different way. You start like, well, maybe this team, there's something there. Maybe there's something there with this team. And I don't think this Vanderbilt team can compete for a national championship or even an SEC championship. Um, I don't think it's absolutely insane to think this team could make a bowl. Um, Vanderbilt has played solid football. A lot of that has been Diego Pavia. I will say that I was a big fan of Diego Poppy when he played in New Mexico State, and I think that's why New Mexico State was so good for so long, was that and his head coach was phenomenal. But Diego Poppy is a good quarterback, and I'm glad that finally people are seeing him on a national stage. I hope that we see him on a national stage a little bit more. Uh, I think Diego Poppy is a hell of a QB, and I think he's always been underrated in the college game because he's played at a university like New Mexico State is that is not seriously a contender for a national championship every year or even viewed by the public really that much. Most of their games are on ESPN+. Plus. Diego Pavia is amazing. Anyone who's seen him play can attest to this fact. He's a baller. The kid can play football flat out. Um, now, that's probably not going to relate to the pros at all. It doesn't look like his play style is going to convert there, but... I'm really excited to see the Vanderbilt team. Uh, Georgia State's typically not bad, and Christian Veyu was a good replacement for Darren Granger. Um, I just think they're still going through some issues. They're 1-1, one and, one, and their one loss is to Georgia Tech. It's not that bad, honestly. They've been playing some decent football, and it's at home. Um, but I just, I don't think, I think Vanderbilt's on too much of a roll right now. They're playing too great of football. Now, this could be where their season goes collapse mode, right? Losing to Georgia State would likely collapse their entire season. Um, but I, I like Vanderbilt to win and cover on the road.